Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today we're looking at five things for us to look in our own hearts to make sure we are not walking in unforgiveness. We know the words of Jesus that are taught in Luke chapter six, where he speaks about blessing those who curse you and despitefully use you and persecute you. And sometimes I think friends, we don't understand the, the, the enormous responsibility that, that we also have to be careful of people that can cause you great harm. Now, in forgiving, we must understand these things will help you to know if you're holding unforgiveness. But let us understand this. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12 tells us that the wise or the prudent, they see trouble coming and they hide themselves. They, they get away from anything that can harm them. But a fool will continue to walk carelessly without regard for the fact that they can be consumed. So, when we extend forgiveness, especially to the brethren, to those that are in the body of Christ, you have to understand if a person is out to get you, or if a person has done something that is a considerable character flaw, because of boundaries that each one of us should have. Boundaries protect you. There is a reason why all of the disciples were not in Jesus' inner circle. It was James, Peter, and John, but he had 12 disciples. It was a core group though, that we regard as that, that, that inner circle. When people show you who they are, you should believe them. And we must allow prudence, as the scripture says, to be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Friend, when we try our hearts and, and understand some people, they have to be cut away. This is a tedious journey. We have to understand it behooves us to know when to cut people away from you that have the potential to continue to violate your boundaries, your values. If a person um, does value your friendship, your relationship, be it business, ministry, your uh, associates, and we're not talking now so much primary relationships. We're talking about secondary relationships. We're talking about people who don't really know you. They're not really your friend, but they have done things to violate you, my friend. I want you to understand, well, not just them. It, it, it would be inclusive of everyone because at the end of the day, we can all take offense. We can all be offended. But here's what I want us to understand from Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12. You have to know when to be prudent or wise to get out of the way of someone that could potentially cause you harm. And you can forgive and not have an interest in restoring that relationship. We have a right to do that, brothers and sisters. God does give us free will, but more so, he gives you an eye how to utilize wisdom. Wisdom is looking at a situation, looking at it with clear thoughts and making a decision. And for some people, they do need to be set on the outer court, if you will, of your life. Um, so let's look at five things where you will know you're holding unforgiveness. Number one, if you have a desire to retaliate or vengeance is in your heart, you know you have unforgiveness. When you think about that person, you want to harm them. You want to do something 
to get their attention. And usually this is where people will start doing number two. They will slander the person. They will, they will make sure any person connected to the person that they are holding that grudge, that unforgiveness, they're going to make sure when they hear your name that every person in the room knows that you are no good for nothing. That's their opinion. <laughs> Friends, if that's you and you, when you hear this person's name, you want to make sure that you just crush them like a bug through slander. Friend, that is no doubt a manifestation of unforgiveness. Number three, you cannot bless them with the fruit of your lips. You cannot pull it out of you to say, God bless so-and-so. God bless them. I wish them the very best. If you can't say it, my friend, you got to go digging to get it out. Because the root of bitterness is the same as the manifestation. It is the manifestation of unforgiveness. Because when you're bitter, you cannot bring forth nothing sweet. It's not going to come out of your mouth. So, number four, when you withhold helping an individual. For instance, if you're married and you know that your spouse loves for you to have certain things done and you have done this, this is your pattern. But now that you let the root of bitterness come, you're not doing nothing. <laughs> you're like, get your own coffee and the cream too. <laughs> I ain't getting him nothing. No, 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 no. That is a manifestation of unforgiveness. That root of bitterness done got in. You got to understand too, brothers and sisters, when it comes to primary relationships between a husband and a wife, between your, 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 your covenant person, this is a person you're in a covenant with them. Friends, there is no relationship more important because once you have been offended, if you don't talk about it, and that's where the scriptures teach us in Ephesians, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Once you become stirred up and now that, that blood is boiling, <laughs> you need to have a quick conversation. But then when we have secondary relationships, people who are pretty much associates, they're not really people that's in your day-to-day -day, you know, life at all, but they have done these things. We go to them, we tell them, I was offended. I didn't like what you did. I didn't like what you said. Eventually, you get that to them. If they casually throw you off, friends, listen, this is where you have to make decisions who can be up close and personal in your life. You don't want people this casual when you're telling them, hey, I didn't appreciate that. And then some offenses, we need to shake it off because these people do not know you. They don't really have any influence whatsoever about your life. So we choose our battles. But last but not least, when you know that you know, if only you and this person was the last two people on the planet, on earth, I've taught this before on the channel. If you know that you know, they can need some food and fresh water and you know in your heart you wouldn't give them nothing you would say die <laughs> friends that is a manifestation of unforgiveness so i believe enough has been said let us try our hearts because friends unforgiveness is poison to our souls and we must know just because we decide to cut fellowship or relate relating with an individual doesn't mean we're holding unforgiveness we have to be wise we have to look at proverbs chapter 27 verse 12 and apply it you have to know when to hide and get yourself out the way don't be careless don't be reckless you got to be shrewd about certain things you have to be a, a, a person of boundary and standards and values. And when the person shows you who they are, you have a right to dismiss them. We do with a blessing in your, in your mouth. I bless you. Go on with your life. God bless you. God, you know, you have a right, my friend. 
So enough has been said. Let us consider these things. Till next time, my friend, a great big God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the savior of the world. If you have fallen from grace, if you are outside of God's will, which is for us to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God through the finished work of the cross. Friend, receive grace today. Don't run from God, run to God. You will know Jesus is a good shepherd when you have fallen and you need him the most to cover you as he sits on the right hand of power, interceding for you and I. Enough said, my friend, till next time, receive his love, receive mercy, receive grace. Come running to the mercy seat. Amen. God bless. Till next time.